Hello, we're going to get started with um, a new video, um, how to take graphics we create in Photoshop, and we're going to go ahead and put them in a different application. And we're going to use PowerPoint to do this. Um, you can see the PowerPoint icon I have for that app down here on my taskbar. I'm going to click here where it says type here to search. I'm going to type in PowerPoint. And here comes the app up. And I would go ahead and I would right click that and pin that to my taskbar or pin that to my start menu. You can see mine's pinned to my, my taskbar. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and open that up. And we're going to use this to lay out our business flyer. So this will give you some practice in creating graphics in Photoshop and then bringing them over and placing them onto and into a different application. So I'm going to open up this blank presentation here. Now I want to get this set up in a portrait orientation. Right now it's landscape. Okay, so it's longer than it is tall. And so I'm going to delete. I'm going to click on a border here and delete these text boxes. And then I'm going to take this. I'm going to go to my design tab. And I'm going to go over here to slide size. And I'm going to kick, click down here on custom slide size. And here it gives me this dialog box. And I can go ahead. I'm going to change my orientation to portrait. So I'm taller than I am wide. And I'm going to set up for a normal size piece of paper. Okay. So I'm going to go letter paper. It says eight and a half by 11, but the slide size at seven and a half by 10. And I want to fix that. I want to go eight and a half by 11. And the reason it's doing that is to give you an inch margin. But we're going to go, we want to see what this totally looks like perfectly filled out. So I'm going to click OK, click maximize, press OK. Now I have a portrait orientation where I can lay out my business flyer. And there's examples on the front wall in the room too. But first thing we should do is we should save this. It says presentation one. I know I haven't saved this. So I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to go to this PC. I'm going to go to my documents. Go to that web design folder that I created. I'm just going to save this in graphics. And I'm going to name this field just flyer. See, there's a previous one in here for me um, from explaining this to another class or another person. But you guys should have the first one that you've created should be going in here right now. I'll hit save. Mine's going to say replace. I'll click yes. Yours is just going to save. Okay. And so now I have this. And so now the beauty or the purpose of this is to get you used to now taking from the design phase in Photoshop where I have multiple layers, tons of different things, and go ahead and compressing these those objects into graphic file types that we can use. Okay, so I'm going to go File, New, and I'm going to design the title for my business flyer. And I'm going to go ahead and just set it at 800 by 300 with a transparent background. I'm not even going to name it because I'm not going to save it. Um, so I'm going to press OK. OK, so this is untitled. But I'm just going to use this to create copies of the things that I want. And then I don't, you know, I don't really need to save it with all its layers. OK, so I'm going to take and I'm going to create a title. All right, so I'm gonna grab my, my type tool. I'm gonna to pick a, a style of font that I wanna use, Gadoogie. And I'm gonna say bold. I'm gonna go size 72, but I'm gonna probably change that. Pick my color. So I decide that I want a light blue color. And I go ahead and I click in here and I'm gonna type in Jason's Bait Shop. And I'm going to stamp that down with my check mark. Now I'm going to I'm going to resize this a little bit. I'm going to go Control T, 
hold shift, grab a corner, make this bigger, reposition it, stamp it down again. I'm going to add some effects. So I'm going to go down to my layer styles or my layer effects. I'm going to bevel this. And so I'll go to my bevel and play with my settings, get it how I want it. I'll press OK. Maybe I want to put a stroke on this. So I add a stroke, press OK. You can mess with those settings too, but pretty good right there. Three is pretty good. Press OK. Effects, drop shadow. So I can play with my drop shadow, adjust the opacity, look at my distance, get it how I want it. I press OK. And I'm ready to take, and I want to use this now in my business flyer in PowerPoint. Well, I'm going to get rid of some of this dead space here. So I'm going to grab my crop tool. I'm going to change my setting, you know, whether I had it on something else, but I'm going to make sure it's unconstrained, which allows me to do just a free crop of anything I want. And I'm just going to cut out just for just for usability sake, some of that dead space hit the check mark, and here I am. I, I want to take this now and I want to save this as a type I can use in this PowerPoint. So I'm going to go File and Save for Web. Okay, so save for a website. But this is a quick, quick uh, little um, dialog box that allows me to look at some different file types, see the pros and cons and decide that I want what I want to save it as. So up here in your presets is basically what you need. Okay, so there's GIFs. I don't use GIFs hardly ever anymore. They're smaller than PNGs, but they're not as good a quality. And it used to be a concern 10, 15 years ago that a PNG was twice as big as a JPEG or a GIF. But with how fast computers are, the processing speed, the ability to store data on a computer, it's kind of gone away. And so a PNG kind of gives you the best of all worlds. It can be transparent. Um, it's got great quality. A JPEG has great quality, but can't be transparent. A GIF doesn't have as good a quality. It's limited in its colors. And you'll see some, you'll lose some quality and have some kind of ugliness with a GIF a lot of times. But <clears throat> it can be transparent. I think we talked about that in the last lesson. So I'm going to go PNG 24. I'm going to hit save. It's going to say, okay, what do you, where do you want to save this as and as what? Well, I messed up the first video I did. So I have this biz title here that I've already done. Um, so I'm going to save it as biztitle.png over this old one. Yours will be your first one. So that's why it's asking me to replace. But I've just saved this as a PNG into that graphics folder. So now when I go back to PowerPoint, or it could be any application, I can go insert picture. I can go to my documents. I'll go to that web design folder, that graphics folder, and I can insert that biz title. And I can put that up here. I can even resize it up here too if I wanted to. Okay, so you're gonna notice when you go to insert pictures, you're gonna be like, well, I had a ton of different pictures in here. True, but not pictures you can insert in PowerPoint. Okay, if you click on all files, you're gonna see all your PSDs and everything, but those can't be inserted. Like I can't insert this transparent picture of me as a PSD. It's like, no, we don't accept that. Okay. So Photoshop's for designing. It's the creativity part of things. But at some point I need to compress those layers and those even those effects and put them into a file format that I can use in outside sources. Okay, and that's why file save for web becomes important. So I'm gonna close this. I don't need to save it. I'm gonna go file open. And I'm going to open up in my documents web design folder graphics. I'm going to open up that trans me. 
Okay, so there's that image. It's not me, but um, I want to use this in my PowerPoint. Well, I can't right now because it's a .psd, but I can easily make a copy this of this as a .png. I just go file save for web, PNG24, I hit save, I hit save. Now I have a transme as a PSD here, and I have a transme as a PNG. So now I can go insert pictures, and there it is. And if you hover on it, you can see it's a PNG file. <clears throat> so then I can place my software gear in that image. Now you're also going to have to create a logo, and to create a logo, I'm going to make one quick here. Okay, I'm just going to go file new. I'm going to go 500 by 500. But you're going to use, you can use a bunch of different layers, a bunch of different options. Um, I would take and maybe use some shapes. Okay, so maybe you want to take and you want to use some different shapes. Um, you can see right now, this has got a stroke and no fill. Okay, let's give that a fill color of blue. And I'm going to take the stroke off. And with shapes, what I've found, so here's my ellipse tool so I can draw a circle. It's best to draw the shape and then change the color to what you want it to be. And there's in these preset shapes, like there's the polygon tool. So the polygon tool allows you to, to go ahead and pick five sided, three sided. So if I go five sided, I do a pentagon. And again, I'm just going to change the color once I've drawn it. I could grab my move tool. You can see it's making new layer, new layer, new layer. There's a line tool. So you can draw a line. That line allows you to do different thickness. You know, the thicker you make a line, it starts to become a rectangle. But and again, you should pump in your settings. So I'm going to trash that. Pump in your settings. So let's say I wanted a 10 pixel line. I'm going to pump in those settings and then draw it and then go change the color to the color I want. There's also in the preset shapes, there's custom shapes. And there's not a ton of them here. There's a few. I think you can download more too. So you might have different ones than I have in here actually. But if you want to use any of those custom shapes, you can too. So let's say as part of my logo, I wanted this flag. I could click on that. I could draw this flag. I could change its color. And I could take and move that somewhere. Maybe I want to go right there. You can change the order too, like we've done before. Okay. Maybe, you know, Jason's Bait Shop. So JBS. Maybe I want to take my type tool. And I want to pick a font style, and I'm going to type in a J. Stamp that down. I'll click my type tool. I'll type in a B. Stamp that down. Maybe I click again and type in an S. Stamp that down. And so I could take my J, and I could take my B. And obviously, you guys are going to do a way better job at this than me. And my S as part of my logo. And I go, okay, here's my logo. Now, tons of layers. I need to compress this, smack this together into one layer, one file type that allows me to put it into this other application. I'm going to crop this unconstrained, get rid of some of the dead area around it. Don't need to be maneuvering with something that's got a bunch of extra junk on the outside. But now I'm ready to export it. File, save for web. Again, you can never go wrong with the PNG. Save it. Save this as logo. The now a logo. It's saved as a PNG. I don't even need the original unless I wanted to save it because I'm, you know, this is really good and I may manipulate it or do it again. I could save it as a PSD, 
and then I have all these layers and I can manipulate it and then I can export off it again. I'm not going to, um, I'm just gonna get rid of it. Now I go back to PowerPoint, insert, pictures. There's my logo, that's a PNG. And there I go, okay? And so this is how you're gonna lay out your business flyer. Come up with something in the title that's got either your first name or your last name in the, in the name of the business. You need a picture of you, you need a logo, you need some other information that's on that rubric, and then upload that into Google Classroom when you're complete. So that should get you started on the business flyer. Um, I will link this video to Educal so you guys can watch it there. And thanks for watching and good luck on your assignment. See you in class.